6 in the wealth of the kingdom uh, subtitled a thousand times more Amen. we've been talking about most of us in here are expressly have expressed to God and expressly desiring to go to another level and, and, and what good is it for you to go to another level financially if you're not happy and fulfilled spiritually? Amen. And you cannot go to a spiritual level without unlocking something in your finances. Amen. Because when, when we start doing things that please God by faith, Amen. remember, not the faith itself pleases God, it's what you're believing for and believing and what you're doing, what it activates in you that pleases God. It's the action of your faith that pleases God. Amen. So when we, when, we, when we start doing things that please God, then financially that's the natural response for Him to bring blessing, and everybody say increase. increase. Say abundant increase. Abundant increase. I keep reminding you, and, I, and I, I'm constantly reminding myself of this, Every one of us in here, I don't care if you're on unemployment, I don't care if you're on disability, I don't care if you're on social security, I don't care if you're on, on food stamps, every one of us in here are too blessed to complain, period. End of discussion. So quit asking God to bless you because you're already blessed. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're already blessed. Come on, say, say it with conviction, you are already blessed. Okay, so now if you're going to ask God to bless you more, Remember the word more, the acronym for more is money or resources every day. God will either put money in your hand or resources to make money every single day. So when you ask God to bless you, quit saying, Lord, bless me. Say, bless me more abundantly. Increase me more abundantly. Okay? The first step, as our text it is a strange text, but that's how Holy Ghost works for a kingdom, uh, a kingdom air series or the wealth of the kingdom or a money series, a financial uh, uh, series. But in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old thing, the old is past, the new has come. It is a principle. It is a law. In order for the new to come, you have to move out the old. So it's time to sow. If you want the new and not and get stuck with the old, you gotta sow. Amen. Okay? Amen. And I mean sow, not sold. Almost said it, sell it on eBay. If somebody had need of it, sow it. Okay. The only way to change is by willing to change. Say with me, I will be diligent. I will change. I will be the best that I can be. I will be on time to church, to work, to appointments. I will be faithful. I will be obedient to God's word. I will be a better person. See, if you can say all day long, Lord, make me a better God. I'm not going to make you anything. God does not force his character upon you. You have to will to change. Marion said something in Sunday school this morning that resounded in my spirit that was not, was not a, a flesh and blood, but it was of the spirit. Okay, and if you want to hear it, I'll, I'll share it with you because it might just explode in your spirit because as the scripture says, be it unto me according to his word that came forth from her mouth. But she said, Doctor, you have dominion over a silly donut. Amen. Oh, see, you go donut. Donut. Anybody, anybody eat donuts here? Y'all eat? That box seems to empty itself out every Sunday. <laughs> because when I get around them, I find myself just want to reach in there and grab it. Uh, for some reason, my mind has tricked me to think that donut holes are just, they don't count. Because <laughs> it's the hole of the donut. But how do you know that each one of those little donut holes has 
hundreds of calories. And, and I would tell myself, well, I can't, I can't resist it because it's right there and, and it's just on Sundays. And when she said that, I was like, that is the truth. I have authority. I have power. I'm bigger than that stupid donut hole. The sugar that's happening in me right. over that donut. Yes. Well, they didn't. Maybe it, maybe it'll hit you later. But I I will to change by the power of the spoken word. Doctor has power and dominion over donuts. Amen. I believe it. I, be, I believe that. See, success is what? God's Word operating in every area of your life. Not just in the finances, but in, I'm going to show you, it's going to blow you away what this, what this revelation of the number five, of, and why, because I kept saying, Lord, why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you just have me take a $16 offering or a $160 offering? And God said, no, I'm taking the people to another level, right. to the 5,000. Well, in your bulletins, there's a list of the people. And when, when, when the vow is paid, they're going to be put in red. And we have our first vow paid. Hallelujah. Amen. And, of course, I need a magnifying glass to read. But uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 21, the Bible says, When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not be slack in paying it, or slow. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and slackness would be a sin in you. Okay, this is serious commitments that we've made here. And we're gonna see how God will give us witty inventions or ways, ideas, to produce this life transforming seed to change our lives. I have watched, Judy and I, throughout the history of our ministry, have watched God do great things with $5,000 seeds, $10,000. Personally, we have experienced it. We have sown that kind of seed. I told you that last month, I sowed a $5,000 seed. Didn't even know. God put money in my hands, and I released it. And God honored that. And that's where the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. But the, the, uh, as we begin to change our mindsets, because the, the word that God, the focus that God, the operative word that God gave us last week with the message was that we have been tithing and, and giving offerings based on natural resources, on natural understanding and not supernatural understanding. And that's what God began to move in our spirit. We reap from what we sow, not what we do. Because I'm going to show you that this seed has atonement in it. Amen. Because there, oh, how many of you in here have ever made a mistake, a financial mistake? Amen. And you wish you had, you're like, well, why did I buy that? Why did I do that? Why did I invest in this? Why did I, why did I spend it on that? Why, did I, why didn't I? Okay, well, there's, there's atonement. This is, this is, well, let me just get to it. Okay. We all do stupid things, but it's the seeds that you have sown that can either bless you, bring you, bring a blessing, or bring a curse. We must adhere to the principles and truth of God's word to achieve greatness. It's not by accident that the moon is in a historical place for us, for our generation, for this time, and for, for right now, for this weekend. The, 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 the term apogee, the term apogee and perigee are have in relation to how close and how far the moon is from the earth. Apogee is when it's at its furthest, and perigee is when, when it's at its closest. And last night, through this morning, we experienced perigee, where the moon was 
brighter and bigger than we normally are able to see it. But how do we know that the moon did not expand in size? It is merely our perception. Come on, let that explode in your spirit. Because, the, because this is what the Lord spoke to me when I, when, I, when I went outside to look at the moon and find it. And I found it glowing brightly. Beautiful. It wasn't a blue cast. It was a bright white, crisp, clean white light that it was producing. And I've always had an affinity with the moon. As a child, I would always gaze up at it and, and, and just almost could touch it. And as I watched this moon, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I mean, a, 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 a parody, the Lord is near. That's what I heard God say. See, we, we, because the lunar, the lunar cycles is what the Bible is set on. That's why the Sabbath and, and, and the Shabbat has to do with the sunset. We celebrate the Sabbath not while we're sleeping, but while the moon, the lunar cycle, is taking its course. And that's when the day is completed in the Jewish calendar. And so the Lord spoke to me and said, this is a time of perigee. The Lord is near. And I, I just want to speak that to your spirit. So how many of you want to do great things in your life, in, 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 your, in your family? You cannot achieve greatness unless you are willing to do what that still small voice speaks to you, which was what spoke to you and gave you unction last week to stand up. It wasn't because you said, well, our doctor convinced me to give get $5,000. No, there was no prodding. There was no emotional music attached to it. I appealed to your senses. I appealed to your thoughts, to your mind, and I said to you, God is requiring this of us at this hour. Let's open up our hearts. And he said, I'm drawing close. Okay. So we left off last week uh, talking about faith and giving our tithes and our seeds and our offerings by faith and not by perception. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is, now faith is, the substance of things hoped for, Amen. the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. It's not that it's not there, it's that we are not in perigee. Come on somebody, we are not yet close enough, draw near to me, says the Lord, and we'll begin to see these things which he has promised us. You cannot comprehend the principles of greatness and kingdom air status through the natural mind. They must be perceived by faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's by faith. This is something that happens by faith. And I just want to, to, to let you know that, that you're probably going, oh dear God, what did I get myself into? And doctors put it in the bulletin. It's going to be in there until I pay it off. Until God, dear God. No, don't sweat it out. Trust. Believe. Buy. Listen, you didn't, you did not, I, I, I didn't tell you if the Lord brings this to you. I just said, God said we're going to sow a seed. And you all got up. Like I said, there was no pressure. There was no sales pitch. I just said, God told me, and I kind of chuckled because I said, y'all are going, oh, doctor's about to take up a $16 offer because it was June the 16th. Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody even said, well, oh, and he's going he's to take up the $1,600 offering. And can I say it? Well, I just said it. <laughs> and Honey goes, and, and that we can handle. 